Good evening, everybody. So exciting news. We are starting a new series on Backtrack Sports tonight, and it's called Back Your Girl. And our first guest tonight will be Ria. Uh, we're just waiting for her to come on. She is the current national title holder in the 100 meters for 2021. And I am so excited to start this new series just to showcase the female talent that we have on track and field and you know to give them exposure to find out what they do in their day-to-day -day lives to find out how they train how they prepare for big tournaments so i hope that you guys are going to enjoy this new series and we're going to have lots of fun getting to know our female athletes on track if you guys have any female athletes that you want to get to know that you want to speak to that you want to engage with please send us a message because i think this is going to be a really really interesting series that we're going to be doing um, and it's called Back Your Girl for those who are just joining. Good evening, Temba. Good evening, Boki. Um, good evening, Luto. Oh, we've got a lot of people joining here. Jesse, hello. Hello, everybody. So, our guest again for tonight is Ria. She's the current 100 meter national title holder. So, if you guys have any questions for her, send them through. We're going to get to know her. We're going to get to know about her training. We're going to get to know about her studies. And just life in general, we're just waiting for her to join us and come online. Oh, hello Ria! Ria has just logged on to Back Your Girl series and we are really excited to chat to her. Just waiting for Ria to request. Hello Jacques, how you doing? Evan, welcome guys. Welcome, welcome. Zinzi, welcome. Going live with Ria in the next second. You know how it goes, we had a little bit of signal issues. Um, Ria is obviously at the HBC. She runs for Tux. Um, so let's see if she can get on. Hello, Ria. Hi. <laughs> How's that signal going over there? <laughs> <laughs> much better. <laughs> it's much better. The race, would have been, the race would have been over by now. <laughs> <laughs> Most probably. <laughs> but just to everybody that's on, welcome to our new series by Backtrack Sports. It's called Back Your Girl. And our first guest for the series is Ria, who is the current national title holder in the 100 meters. Welcome, Ria. <laughs> Thank you very much. I How appreciate it. Has that sunk in yet that you are the title holder in the 100 meters? Right now it's sunk in. I just think um, it's just weird because on the track everybody just keeps calling me national champ, national champ. But it's just the usual guys I'm I'm used to, you know. But it's sunk yeah. in at this point. I mean, you started off in the senior champs in 2018 as a semi-finalist. Yeah. Semi-finalist, and then three years later you are the champion. Right? That is yeah. a massive step. Like from being a semi-finalist to being a champion and actually holding that title for 2021. You know, what is the journey from 2018 until now? Yo, a very tough journey. A lot of code changing, a lot of environment changing. There's a lot of things that changed from 2018 to get me to 2021, plus the pandemic last year. So... I think for me and my current coach right now, the training that we did last off season, the end goal was to obviously win the national title and run some fast times this season. And I'm just grateful that things, you know, um, came together at the right time. That's, that's amazing. I mean, crossing that line and knowing that you have won that race, I know from being an athlete previously, is the yeah. greatest feeling in the world, you know? And, mm -hmm. and I just want to know, after winning the race, what did you do to enjoy yourself? How did you spend the race at the beginning? Sorry? After winning the race, what did you do to reward yourself? How did you spend the rest of the evening? I honestly didn't do anything. I still had the relay the following day, but I did eat out. I think I deserved to eat out because <laughs> we healthy for like quite some time preparing for the show. It was it was just chilled vibes. I didn't do anything, you know, crazy or out of the ordinary because I started drink the following day. What did you eat? What where did you go? What did you eat at? What was that meal? I had McDonald's. <laughs> I have I had McDonald's. 
the classic. A lot of people know me, and I love McDonald's. A lot of people know I love McDonald's, so I had to go get I myself a big bag. You the hundred yeah. meter title holder. You deserve it. You know what I mean? Like no one can judge you right now. <laughs> it's myself. <laughs> <laughs> so Ria, tell me, when did your career start, and what made you get into track and field? Like, what was your motivation? I think. Um, my career started when I was in primary school, but I wasn't that serious about track and field until I got the opportunity to come to Tuxford High School, I think in grade nine. So when I came here and got exposed to, you know, big name athletes, got exposed to this type of environment, these kind of facilities, that's when I really grew more in love with sports. You know, at that age, you're still kind of trying to figure out where you belong. And yeah coming to Pretoria and going to a sports school you know assured me that this is what I want to do yeah and obviously that's an amazing opportunity that's an opportunity that not a lot of people get yeah. from grade nine to be in a high performance um, environment and to be with elite athletes at that level how did you get that opportunity um I'm not sure how they select athletes now, but at the time, they just scout you at um, national championships or your provincials, anywhere where there is competitive um, racing for kids at that age. So I got scouted and I got the opportunity to come here to kind of see what they're all about, you know, ask questions if I had any questions and went through a selection process because we still had to check your academic record and your progress in training. And then I got a letter yeah. saying, you know what, they want to award me the opportunity to come here. Yeah. And I mean, me growing up as an athlete, I, I'm not going to even lie right now. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, no, but my idol was Marianne Jones. You know, she was like, I wanted to be like Marianne Jones. <laughs> Did you have any idols? Did you have any, um, you know, athletes that you looked up to? You know, um... Obviously, I think for me too, it was Marion Jones, but that's because, you know, I grew up in a very sporty household and my grandfather was a big track supporter and he loved watching Marion compete. And for the longest of time, I always heard him talk about Marion, but I never knew who because I was young. And then as I grew more into the sport, you know, I learned who she was. Um, but she's definitely one of the people I looked up um, at coming up in the ranks and Kelly Ann Fraser um, I can't remember I think it's Stuart from Jamaica I can't remember her yeah. 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 yes yes um, these are definitely the people I looked up to and Geraldine Pillay, um, definitely someone I looked up to um, especially because she's a South African and when I came to the, uh, the school in grade 9 I got the opportunity to be coached by her so yeah, someone I looked up to, you know, growing up as a sprinter. Yeah, and how was she as a coach? Just like you know, by the way, it was tough. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely tough. I think, you know, I think she was tough because she did understand that it really does take a lot to be successful in this sport, especially as a female. You know. So she was yeah. definitely tough, um, and she was very honest. And she always told us, "You'll never get any rewards without working hard." And nothing comes mm -hmm. easy in the sport, you know. So, but she was definitely yeah. tough. She was definitely tough. I mean, you touched on it. Um, we have to work hard as females. I think sports people have to work hard in general. But yeah. I do believe yeah. that females we face, you know, little tougher challenges, and um, we go through a little more. Um, what is your biggest challenge in your sporting career so far? Um, yo, I think my biggest one has been support, but not from like, um, you know, my family is there and my friends are there supporting me, but in a sport like track and field, especially in South Africa, it's very male dominated. Um, you don't really get a lot of groups that have a lot of females training together or um, most of the time there's a bunch of guys training together. Even here at Tux, most of the coaches here are male coaches, you know. So I think the toughest thing is having that female support in the sporting industry. You can train with boys, but it's just not the same team. They just don't get it. So I think yeah. that is the big challenge. Because um, sometimes I feel like you always have to explain yourself as a female athlete. Because you don't have enough uh, female athletes around to kind of bounce off certain ideas on. 
Yeah, that makes yeah. perfect sense. I mean, even now, like, I think we really miss having a female relay team. Um, yeah, you know, in the four by one for South Africa. I mean, we just watch mm-hmm. the guys dominate. Um, yeah, the world relay. Them. Obviously, we're proud of them and and mm-hmm. we look up to them and we would love to see a female team, you know, at that level as well. But how do we Definitely. as how do we as athletes like me as a retired athlete and you as a current athlete? Mm-hmm. How do you think you know we can encourage younger girls that in grade eight, in grade seven, you know, to um, work hard and you know to keep keep at their dream? Because a lot of a lot of young girls still want to be Olympians or still want to achieve greatness, but it just seems impossible right now. Oh, tough question. <laughs> I think we have a tough question. <laughs> I think it's a tough question because it's. There's a lot to think about in answering it, but because I work, mm-hmm. I actually work at Tuck High School as an intro, and I get exposed to um, young female athletes. Obviously, who wanna someday um, win a national championship or represent their country internationally. So one thing that I've seen and I've learned is that they need more female coaches. We need more female. Um, Biocases. We need more females just to attract industry. Um, that is how we'll be able to push girls continuing with sport even when they um, get older or they at the age of twenty five. Because most girls finish or stop sport after high school. So I think yeah. it's difficult to kind of try to encourage um, everybody in South Africa as one person. But if you have a bunch of people in different provinces, in different areas of the province, encouraging the girls to, you know, continue work hard and, you know, it's not easy, but you'll be there that for in time. It makes it much easier. Because um, yeah. now you can keep here and have to drive and um, then we will have um, young aspiring female actors watching and listening. But, you know, we have a bunch of voices everywhere saying the same thing. It'll yeah. make it much, you know, it'll make it much easier to get the message across. Hundred percent. And I think you're in a very, very powerful position. I mean, being a mentor at one of the biggest schools in terms of sports in in South Africa, like you hold a lot of power. And I think that one thing that we obviously maybe still lack with in tech and field and in sports in general, mm. especially women's sports, is mentorship. Like having people, real, true, honest people guiding, you know, the young athletes. So kudos to you for doing that. And I hope that you really um, place importance on that role and you take it, you know, as far as possible and you use it. But I hope so. With a hectic question here, <laughs> what, <laughs> what has been your toughest training session? Toughest? Pure. Yeah. Any, any session in the off season is very tough for me. Like... Anything as a sprinter, because I do incorporate some 200 meter training in my program. So anything over 200 meters, and I have to go to multiple times, is yeah. very difficult. It's very challenging and very difficult. So anything around the. Yeah, I know. I know. As sprinters, we always like crap. Now we have to run 500 meters. Or yeah, meters. yeah. Like, <laughs> who does that? Who does that? <laughs> I tell you about it. And who in your your circle, whether it's your training group, whether it's your family, who keeps you grounded and motivated? Um, yo, I honestly, it's my my partner right now, my boyfriend. He's also an athlete, so um, he does keep me grounded, you know. Um, and I obviously spend most of my time around him and with him. And he's somebody I can bounce off any ideas on. So he's definitely somebody that keeps me grounded. Yeah, that's good. And, and your coach, what is your relationship like with your coach? Because, I mean, even, like, I mainly had male coaches in my career. I hardly mm-hmm. had female coaches. And I feel like sometimes it's, it's, it's a little difficult to completely be honest with your coach and, you know, say how you're feeling or what you're going through as a woman. And do you find that challenging at times? It is challenging at times. Um, the current coach I'm with, we actually only started working together last year. Um, I think, you know, 
around June, July, we started working together, but I had known him as an athlete for a couple of years. So getting to build the relationship we've built now wasn't as challenging as I thought it would be, but he's a very open-minded person, and we did have a conversation from the beginning that, you know what, I am a female athlete, and he's a male coach, and yes, there are certain uncomfortable conversations we need to have, but in order to progress, we'll obviously have to have them. Um, that's something very much in mind, very understanding. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. What has, like, I like, I like finding out, you know, what has been challenging and interesting in terms of um, races and places you've been. I mean, I raced a 200 meter once um, a while back and I was obviously beaten. And oh. she was so happy that she won the race that she kind of, you know, slipped at the end with a little bit of urination over there so <laughs> what funny moments do you or memories like do you have from competitions you know maybe it never went away maybe something bad happened maybe i don't know to say something funny um yo i think all the memories will have to be with me losing a race <laughs> most definitely like it's never nice losing a race. It's never nice losing a race. But I can't think of a, something that happened while somebody was winning or during that race that really was a highlight to me. You've never fallen but, on track or anything? I've actually never fell on the track. I've never. I've never. You lucky. I've never. You're very lucky. <laughs> I've never fell on the track. A lot of people have. And I'm a very clumsy person. I'm very clumsy yeah. in the gym. I'm very clumsy yeah. in the gym, but on the track, I'm always on my feet. Always. Oh, that's my, <laughs> always on my feet. National title holder now. <laughs> Who's one person that you would love to race? Right now, the one person I would definitely love to race is um, Lungo. I think you might know her from Botswana. Yeah. Yeah, she's a phenomenal athlete, you know. Um, she also used to be in the school with me, and um, we trained together briefly until she moved back to Botswana. But she's in great shape, you know. She is in phenomenal shape. She was recently at the World Relays with her team. So racing her right now would definitely be something I'd love to do, especially because she ran a season's based on a national record um, for her country this year. So I would, I would like the challenge, which is why I'd want to compete against her. Yeah, she's, she's doing exceptionally well. I think there's a lot of um, girls coming up within Africa, which is so great to see. You know, just yeah. to see the young talent coming through, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, yeah. Do you think there's an opportunity to race her? What's, what's the plans for the rest of your season? Um, for the rest of the season, I'm going to race on the 22nd of May here at Tux. I found out today that they have confirmed some big meetings. So lucky for us, we'll be able to race on the 22nd of May. I'm still trying to drop my time so I can have an opportunity to have a European season. Seeing that African Senior Championships have been moved to the end of June. So definitely between now and then, I have to get some races in. Yeah, that makes sense. So good luck for that. I think that uh, there's obviously opportunities to get your times down, and I hope you're training really hard for that. Yeah, and we'll I to see if that happens. And where's Africa Champs this year? I heard it's in Algeria, but you know, with COVID and things getting changed yeah. so often, you never know. You never know. And what you try your training like? You know, with the COVID. Um, challenges, etc. Do you get as many sessions in as you, as you want? Because I know there's obviously restrictions in terms of who can use a track when, and you have to make certain bookings. And you're obviously a BCom law student as well, so that can yeah. be challenging. Yeah. No, right now, honestly, we can use the track at any time. So I haven't had any challenges right now. Obviously, it all depends on the amount of cases we have and if the facilities feel, listen, we've been having too many positive cases nearby. Rather, we have different sessions. So right now, actually, at Tux, we have two sessions a day. So your group either comes in the morning or afternoon to kind of regulate the number of people on the track. And it's the same in the gym. So 
yeah, I haven't had any issues right now. I think it's been like this for the past three months. In the beginning yeah. of January, it was tough to get on the track. Like, I was on the track, like, only twice or three times a week. The rest of the time, I was on grass because there's not enough space and you have to book a slot. So, right now, things are much easier. So, I'm hoping that the cases don't increase. Yeah, no. Also, I've, I've heard... Rumors about a third wave and all of that, but I'm really afraid. Yeah. You know, I was even reading about it today that they might prevent, you know, South Africans from traveling abroad because of the cases. There's just a lot going on. And I mean, with all of that challenges and all of this news that you're reading, how do you keep yourself motivated to, to pitch up the training? Because you don't really know. Like, you think there's athletic yeah. champs, but there's no guarantee. So how do you keep yourself motivated to keep working? The biggest thing for me is constantly reminding myself of the goal I made last year and all the obstacles we had last year um, towards the end of the year um, when it came to training. We really didn't have facilities to train on. We had to make other alternative um, ways. And for me, that's my biggest inspiration. I keep looking back and thinking, you went through all of this and it was not for it to go in vain. And I made a goal, and I definitely want to um, reach that goal this season. So I'd rather um, lose prepared than, you know, lose a race unprepared. Yeah, that makes sense. So, Ria, I had a very interesting game plan for us tonight, but you were sitting outside at the, in the Tux, um HBC eating area, I'm guessing. You're, yes. not, you're not in your, in, your, in your room, right? So the game is not going to work, so I'm going to change it up. A little bit. And okay. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you thirty seconds to name as many female athletes as possible. Okay. okay. But you can't be coming okay. up with funny names here and just randomly throwing out strange names. Female okay? as it has in, to be even jumpers. It doesn't have jumpers, to be but it doesn't have to be sprinters, as long as it's legit female athletes. Like they have let's say at least provincial level. Ooh, okay, I'll try to think of names at the top of my head. I was going to be telling me all your friends' names, yeah, and I'm just like, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> That's not fake. That's not fake. Okay, um, you have... Wait, wait, wait. I need to put the time on. You have 30 seconds. Ready? No, oh, hold up, hold up. I have to also give them surnames. So some of them, I don't even know their surnames. Hey, you need to give me full names like Shelly Ann Fraser Price, as Alison Phoenix, Marion Jones, Karen Stewart, you know, <laughs> Geraldine Filay. Okay, know, like, okay, okay. You, count. you ready? Okay. Yes. Three, two, one. All right, go. Um, can I name myself? We have yeah, my two <laughs> Zinzi Shabangu, um, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, uh, Sharika Richardson, uh, Karina Horn. Alyssa Conley, Tabuko Mamatu, Thames and Thomas, um, Lungo Matlaku, Pacino Obisi, Rose Clay, um, wow. Justine Palferman. Tough, tough. Nine. Um, Alison Felix, uh, who's this? Sonia Richardson, <laughs> Natasha Hastings. <laughs> That's like good. I was wondering if you're going to throw in, you know, some, <laughs> some essays over there. <laughs> They're always on the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Who's been your biggest competition in South Africa? My biggest has to be the Bucho, you know, because yeah. we, we were around the same age and we trained together. We ran for the same club. So she was definitely my biggest competition. Um, yeah, because we've been running together since high school, primary school. There'll always be yeah. that one person you always forever run with. And she was that yeah, one yeah. person. Always. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But Ria, thank you so much for chatting to us on the first episode of That Your Girl, um, That Track. We really appreciate it. I'm wishing you all the best for the rest of the season. I know you have goals. And, you know, we, we support you 100% and we want you to reach those goals. So, We'll be watching your race. We'll be rooting for you. And I hope that you get an opportunity to run at Africa Champs because yeah. then you'll definitely race and give it out, I'm hoping. Um, yeah. And, you know, you can, you can show our flames. <laughs> no pressure. <Thank> <laughs> no pressure. Thank you so Thank much you for listening to us.
Pleasure. I appreciate it. Bye. 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 So guys, that was Ria, national 100 meter title holder for 2021. And she was the first guest on Back Your Girl, that track. So we're going to be kicking the series off and it's going to be an amazing series. Like I said, if you guys want us to speak to any female track and field athletes, whether they're retired, whether they're still upcoming, you know, if you just want to get to know them a little bit more, please DM us so that we can chat to them and get to know them. And we need to support our ladies in track and field. We want to grow track and field for ladies. We want our ladies to be running blitz times like the men at Relay. So let's back your girl. Thank you for chatting with me, Alyssa Conley. Till next week. Bye.